Vermont Forum is excited to present a series of video interviews with the winners of Battlefin's Global Capital Seeding Tournaments. Battlefin uses its tournament platform to crowdsource the world's top investment talent. The winners of the tournaments receive seed capital to fund their winning quantitative, algorithmic, and big data investment strategies. This segment features David Bush of Alphatative, the winner of Battlefin's fourth tournament. Hello, David. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, it's a pleasure. So tell us about yourself. You started out as a musician. Right. Um, what instrument or instruments did you or do you play? I raised my hand for drums mm -hmm. very <laughs> early on, and sh I was told, no, that's percussion, but I rolled with that. My whole youth was really the discipline of music. And you were a professional for a long time. Right. right? I was uh, playing professionally right up till uh, my late 20s, basically. Until your <coughs> late 20s. Yeah. Okay. So what spurred this interest in finance for you? Uh, fascination with markets initially. I had some money to invest. Um, I sought out uh, opinions from you know family and uh, relatives and so forth. And while I'm sure they gave me some, you know, some reasonable advice, I uh, I wasn't quite satisfied with it. And uh, I started simply really immersing myself into the subject. Had you paid attention to the financial? No, 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 I was no. No, no yeah. really um, agnostic. You mentioned talking to you know various family members and friends and trying to get advice right. about how to invest. What surprised you most when you were faced with the, the, the concepts that they were giving to you about how the, uh, the typical strategies right. for investing? Right, the passivity uh -huh. of it all. Right. Uh, in other words, that that is, I believe, what uh, may have been the seed that, that kind of bothered me that was interesting, not satisfying, uh -huh. was that there was such a passivity of, well, you take your money and you just kind of hand it over to this group that essentially benchmarks it uh, and uh, you know there's not a lot of ass, you know, active risk management. Mm -hmm. um, you know that just wasn't a piece of the <laughs> conversations that I was having. It was well that this is a great brand name and this fun company is also very revered and so on and so forth. So um, <clears throat> I think that's absolutely a fine approach. I mean, I think I went kind of the, uh, uh, you know, obviously a strange path for my background to have taken. Uh, nevertheless, uh, I have, a, I think, a natural curiosity. I love to learn and I like challenges. I think it was that active risk management that was just missing from the, uh, the descriptions of these solutions they were suggesting. Right. And do you think it was maybe the, the fact that you didn't have a tra traditional finance background that led you to be able to look at it with an outsider's perspective and say, there's something missing here? I do feel, as I've progressed, that um, I like to look at a lot of different disciplines. You know, obviously my, my early, my youth and, and early adulthood was right. a discipline of music on a very high, serious level. Um, and, um, but I like other disciplines, even if I'm, you know, sitting outside them, I like to learn about them and try to glean something conceptually or maybe even practical that I can take and try to bridge the gap between yeah. uh, various disciplines that, seeming, that are seemingly um, even opposed. Well, you mentioned when we, <coughs> when we yeah. spoke that, that one of your pastimes is getting yourself away from your screen, correct? Right. I feel a bit more free, uh, freer uh, in my thinking process. Yeah. Um, not always, but many times just for to step back and mm -hmm. and try to be, uh, uh, you know, the eagle. You tend to be the mouse a lot when you're at the screen working on that task. And and so um, I find that helpful to, yeah, to, to step away from the screen, not, not during the day, but during, uh, right. uh, at some point, off hours, get away, change my, physically change my environment, actually. Um, so I, act, I literally have a new perspective. Mm -hmm. And then armed with uh, you know, various uh, writing implements and journal and what have you, uh, perhaps conceive something that I would not have done in, inside that normal screen and that kind of frantic cyber pace that we all keep. So can you describe a little bit about how you started gaining more experience investing. Um, you mentioned right. specifically a, a quote-unquote internship with um, yeah. Christine Capital Management. I'd love to hear the story right. of how you got involved with them and just this was in the age before before the internet right. really. <laughs> right, yeah. right on the cusp, exactly. Trade out on my own for a while. I'm educating myself. I have no schooling, no background. I'm you know potentially very dangerous to myself at this point. I realized I need help at a certain point, however, and so um, in the back of a newspaper, and there was no internet, as you already referenced, that anyone knew about. Mm -hmm. uh, I found some fax services, and the fax services were, you know, just basically, uh, you know, trading sheets 
you know, here, here, here's a plan, you know, here's some ideas and mm -hmm. so forth, and, and maybe even here's some education, here's some insight. I remember going to, you know, whatever office store, remember where that was, you know, in the greater New York area outside of the city, and buying that fax machine, I was very excited for that incredible technology that I was bringing home and plugging in. And yeah, in the morning, there's nothing better than this, this piece of paper that just comes out at some random time window mm -hmm. before the market opens, of course, and says, hey, can I hear some ideas? And, and uh, go, go for it. So, yeah. um, you know, I found that very helpful, essentially, you know, uh, even though it's so basic as it is now, you know, just the idea of having a, of a, having a plan, plan of action, yeah. and, uh, and some risk guidelines around that, obviously, is very rudimentary, but that was very helpful, and, uh, and I did call them up said, can I meet you? I'm a subscriber. I'm not that far away. And they were very amenable. I went down, um, met them, watched them uh, at work a little bit, went out to lunch, and then uh, unofficially, no one ever said the word intern, but I did start going there. And I was uh, still a professional musician, so I could go uh, many days. I could break away and uh, go down there as I worked often at night. So It's amazing. So they, they <laughs> were willing to, to take you in, basically, and show you what they were doing in exchange for maybe, you, so you were doing odd jobs around the yeah, office. Odd jobs, like yeah, odd jobs, exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, what, whatever they needed. Uh, they wanted me to analyze some performance updates, um, you know, things that were not, you know, did not require, a, you know, immense uh, um, quantitative knowledge, but, right. you know, but were helpful to them and kind of busy work, you know. Yeah, I would. I'd take anything, absolutely, yeah, you yeah. know, just to be around uh, <laughs> more experienced uh, traders and, uh, and, and watched how they looked at markets and how they looked at individual equities, for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was great. What led to the formation of Alphatative? Really, part of the um, process of becoming quantitative was that the old way was just inefficient. It just wasn't logical anymore, right? Yeah. I mean, it's if, if I can quantitatively um, codify what I've been doing for years and yet make it better at the same time. Mm -hmm. Make it more robust, not, not trade um, uh, concentrated positions, but trade smaller positions. Um, just, just take every concept that I've acquired, because I'm a big book reader, not mm -hmm. only of finance, but it's just of whatever, whatever field, nonfiction or, or fiction. But sure. um, all of these ideas, you know, I, I realize, you know, I can't, I felt like I was in reinventing the wheel every day. Um, and it needed to become much more efficient, uh, and that was a logical conclusion. So yeah. that, that was part of it, too, which is kind of a frustration, especially through the financial crisis, yeah. uh, you know, of 08. Mm -hmm. a, lot, a lot of work um, to be that discretionary trader um, and a hard time for a lot of quants, too, needless to say, uh, during that year. But um, I felt that um, I, I could be much more efficient with my time and spend more time creating uh, new and potentially robust strategies uh, that I could tack on mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, to to my work on a daily basis. Can you describe then your yeah. your Battlefin winning strategy Shh. at a high level? It's a mean reversion, long short equity strategy with a with a mega cap blue chip universe. Do you have any intention of expanding the sources of data that you use in the future? Do you intend to? to maybe include social media feeds in the future or global you know, yes. events and that sort of thing? I do intend to do that at the right time. So in other words, um, the model is, is a robust baseline. Mm -hmm. So I have uh, you know, 16 years of, of um, the survivorship bias-free data set that include all, includes all the tickers that live in infamy like Enron and WorldCom and Lehman and uh, so forth. So I do have this baseline so I can um, I can look at you know present results and returns and so forth, and compare to the baseline. In terms of other feeds, um, you know that is something that certainly, uh, especially thanks to Battlefin, um, my association with Deltix, it's relatively new, but I think it will be a fruitful one, mm -hmm. and um, that affords me the ability to you know have this very powerful tool that. Ag that can aggregate feeds from, you know, all over, essentially, mm -hmm. of all types. And, of course, the quality of those data sources is one of the big things that uh, differentiates, um, you know, uh, of the data available right now. Because yeah. it's not standardized in a lot of ways. Yep. Uh, and, uh, you know, if it is standardized and very cleaned up 
and high quality data that's going to be very expensive so there's just a lot of things to take into account um, I would ideally love to build another model based on that um, rather than just a uh, just a strategy with, with no baseline just going back a step to you know the model I built you know one of the principles I use was Occam's razor which is just always aiming to to choose the simpler of two competing hypotheses or two paths, uh, take the simpler approach, and things tend to be more robust and ultimately statistically significant. So uh, if I could do that with the social media and other sources of data, of which, of course, we're in what people are calling in, uh, the decade of data, as you well know, uh, so that um, uh, I, th I think it's just uh, it's an incredible um, source for, for the future. But right now, I'm concentrated on, uh, you know, just really um, enhancing my current model, yeah. uh, technologically, actually, and uh, in my strategy, my current strategy, uh, and also, um, you know, just uh, having an eye on, on the business and risk management. Do you do all the coding yourself? Alphatative is just you, correct, at this point? Um, it's uh, hopefully within just weeks, actually, yeah. not just me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but you're right. Currently, it is. It is me right now. Um, and um, in terms of coding, yeah. yes, it has been me. Uh, but uh, I think one of my skills is knowing my limits. And uh, so when I have needed help or a second set of eyeballs and another sharp mind on the task, uh, I, I absolutely pay for that because that is that's crucial. You know, yeah. if, uh, if we're dealing, especially with the risk management code, uh, I have sought out, uh, you know, a programmer or two uh, over the last few years, more than a few years now, uh, in terms of uh, helping me with that and yeah. making sure that um, it's working as, as I believe or, you know, enhancing it as I, I feel it needs to be. What do you see as the link between music and your current sort mm. of trading strategy? Music and markets, I think that, uh, while I didn't realize it initially, mm -hmm. I think they're incredibly uh, similar in several respects. I mean, human behavior drives both. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think of them, as I may have mentioned earlier, as both being emotion and rhythm, yep. in that there is uh, there are also broad regimes, if you will, that they share. So in other words, consonance and dissonance in music, uh, that's, um, as I may have mentioned, you know, not unlike a, um, you know, very really tense, unresolved chord. Mm -hmm. uh, it evokes a strong emotional response, and uh, there is a sense of, uh, of arriving home. Uh, markets go through periods of immense distress and typically do resolve in musical terms. So uh, volatility contraction, um, and also is at play in a sound wave or a large transient in a sound wave. In fact, the recording equipment over here, we could look at you know, some of those on the audio files, and you'd see large spikes of volatility. So there are so many ways that they're similar, but really it's that human component, uh, which is something that um, I aim in, you know, in, my, uh, in my strategy work to, uh, to incorporate by identifying you know, what is the prevailing regime mm -hmm. that we're in? What's the behavioral regime? What's the emotional state of the market or the emotion and rhythm currently? Mm -hmm. uh, and then secondly, you know, what are the probabilities, therefore, now that we've identified that or hopefully identified that, what are the probabilities associated with that? And then lastly, you know, how are we going to effectively and uh, efficiently exploit those opportunities? That's, that's basically, you know, the three-step process that uh, is part of the philosophy and, and the practical reality of the strategy. Um, you know, in terms of, of music, um, there's nothing specifically that, uh, you know, I didn't take any fugue uh, or some, you know, part of the Diabelli variations or a Coltrane solo and invert it and make it into a, this brilliant financial strategy. Uh, you know, right. it would be great if I could do that. <laughs> um, but uh, I did take um, inspiration. And I think it's a way of thinking. I think it's a way of thinking broadly and openly, and that's back to the, now we're probably away from a screen thinking about ideas, right? right. And bring that into something that can be um, you know, actionable and practical and, um, and, and have a positive mathematical expectation. You mentioned when we spoke before, you mentioned a quote that inspires you. Can you tell us uh, what that is? I think I remember. <laughs> yeah, Mandelbrot. Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can pull it out, um, which is bottomless wonders spring from simple rules repeated without end. I just love that because that, um, 
that can apply to so many things. I think it applies to finance. It applies to music. Um, that uh, you know, wondrous things can can happen from very simple rules repeated, and that really ties back to the why did I want to quantify? Yeah. It's so much more efficient. It's simpler daily process, and and I, I could go that. on, but. That's, yeah, yeah, I do love that quote. Do you have any advice that you would give to, to other quants? I would say perhaps they might um, be able to bring something they had not conceived of by stepping away from markets and uh, really looking to other disciplines, which I know many do. Yeah. Um, but that, that would be it. You know, maybe uh, take, uh, take that interdisciplinary approach and, and, and bring it back into, into finance. For those who haven't done that, I think that could be an area worth exploring. Yeah, that does sound like very good advice. And, and I think um, the financial services industry is one of the slower industries to adopt ideas from other industries. David, I wanted to thank you very oh. much for taking the time. It's been a fascinating interview. And oh, excellent. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Anna. Pleasure. And thank everybody yeah, for watching. Thank you very much.